Okay guys, I just got done reading this book, Aztec. It's by Gary Jennings, and it is quite literally the best book I've ever read. Um, it's historical fiction, and only the second historical fiction I've ever read. I'm normally a non-fiction guy, and I love, uh, I'm big into the Roman Empire, so I love reading, uh, you know, Roman biographies about Caesar Augustus. I actually just read a book about Alexander the Great, which was good, but it's, it's really dry reading. There's no, it's a story, but it's not written with any kind of artistic or, you know, it's, it's just a biography about this guy's life. If you're not interested in Alexander the Great, you probably wouldn't like the book. And it was hard to get through. I'm not going to lie to you. This book was the opposite. It captivated me from the beginning. I could not put this book down and I'm a slow reader. Um, this is a hefty book. It's 760 pages. This would have normally taken me like half a year probably uh, to get through. I read it in less than two months just because it was so good. A lot of you guys are probably faster reading this than I am. Um, but for me, that was really quick. I could not put this book down. It was so good and so captivating. Um, I first got into historical fiction books. Like I said, this is the only, second, only the second one I've ever read. The first one I read was a book called Musashi. And I'll have to do a review about that book as well someday because it's a great book. But essentially, the book is about this historical figure, Musashi, but it's the exaggerated tale of his life. So a real guy, but the exaggerated version of his real life. And it was so good. The writer really puts you in feudal Japan in the 1500s. The, he describes the setting in such vivid de detail. And uh, you feel like you're traveling along Japan with him, going on this adventure and all the little adventures contained therein, the people he meets and them coming back into the story later. Such a good book. I wanted another story like that. Um, and so I think I was looking at reviews on the book and uh, somebody mentioned the name Gary Jennings. And so I Googled him and Aztec was his most popular book. So I bought this one and uh, it took me a while to get into. Like I said, it is a little hefty. It it's, takes a, some commitment to get through this. And so I finally decided to read it this summer. And it, it was the best book I've ever read. And I'm honestly upset that it's over. I don't even know what to do with myself because it was, this was such an enthralling book. I couldn't wait to crack the book open and read another chapter. Because each chapter contains so much. And there's so much that he does in this book. Um, as you can tell, I'm really excited to talk about this. Because this was such an enthralling adventure that I went on with him. So... To give some context to this book, the main character, like I said, is fictional. His name is Mixley. Um, but this this guy, Gary Jennings, the author, lived in Mexico for 12 years to write this book. So a lot of the things in the Aztec culture are true, are really what happened um, in real life. And he describes them so well. And you really get to feel like you're in Mexico with him Uh you're in the Azte Aztec Empire with the main character, Mixley. It's really like a really descriptive book. And like I said, it puts you in the setting. So not only is the setting really descriptive, but the writing is so good. And all the people he meets. And you really get to feel like you're there with him. And all the different cultures that come into, the, into play. So it starts off, um, the book is basically this guy, Mixley, recounting his life to these Spanish noblemen who are going to then pass on his story to their Spanish king, Carlos, because King Carlos wants to know about the people that he's just now conquered. And so this guy, Mixley, basically comes to tell him about the former Aztec Empire. And to do that, he just basically recounts his life story. It's not just a story about the Aztecs in general, but really personal to him, and it feels like that while you're reading the novel. Um, he has biases, and he obviously he hates the Spaniards. He doesn't like certain other groups of people, so you can see this map, and I love that this book came with the map. Get the hardcover copy, because the maps are better. Um, but all the different cultures and everything that he goes and visits, and you really get the sense of the different kinds of cultures that are there. So the culture that he has in Tecnoticlan, which is right here, is totally different from the cultures that you find down here, where the Maya are up here, and um, you know the different kind of tribesmen that live up in here. But uh, you really get to feel like you're visiting different cultures when you're traveling along with him. Um, anyway, so Mixley's recounting his story to these, these Spanish noblemen. And he starts from the time he was a kid. He's living with his family. 
his father, his mother, his sister. Eventually he goes to a school to get more educated. Um, eventually he joins the army and goes to war. And then most of the book, I'd say about maybe half the book or maybe even two thirds, is he's a traveling merchant. And so he's traveling along what he calls the one world, but it was it's essentially Central America. He's traveling along here looking for goods to sell, goods to purchase that he thinks he might make a bigger profit in Tecnoctitlan. And it's such a riveting story. So as he's going and visiting all these different towns and all these different cities, each one has a different feel and he meets different people there that, you know, impact the story later on. And it's just, a, it's a crazy adventure and it's like you're there with them, like I said. Um, and it's just like, it's his life story. And so a lot of stuff happens in this book. This is a very detailed book. It's, it's not an easy read. It's easy to read, but it's not an easy read. It's very descriptive, very detailed. And you're going on a journey through this guy's life. So he starts off, like I said, as a kid, and then you're going until he's in old age and all the things contained therein. The story has a lot of ups, a lot of great successes, and a lot of downs, and a lot of horrific things that, you know, that happen in this book, and frankly happen, I'm sure, in the real world as well. There's human sacrifice in this book, there's rape, there's incest, um, but it doesn't feel like it's too edgy. It doesn't feel like he threw that stuff in there just to have it be an edgy book. It really feels like this could have been part of the everyday life of an Aztec citizen during this time. Um, so there are things to be, keep that in mind. There are things that might shock you and you might not like to read. For me, the writing was so good and it wasn't overbearing to the point where I felt like, okay, this guy is just being over the top just to sell things. You know what I mean? It really felt like it was part of this guy's life story. And he goes through a lot of loss. Like I said, he has successes in this book, but goes through a lot of loss. Um, there's a lot of things that happen in this book and you're really going on the adventure of his life with him. And life is like a roller coaster, as it is for all of us. And maybe that's why this book is so appealing is because he's telling his life story and it's a story that we can all relate to because it's it has its ups and downs and it's life is, is not pretty and it's not easy sometimes. But there are those good times that happen in life too. And you get that from this book. And it's really, it's just so engrossing and thrilling. Whatever synonym or adjective that you can throw at this book, it is so good. I can't recommend it enough with the caveat that it is a little, a little bit edgy. There are some things in this book. As a Christian man, I didn't enjoy reading. But the writing is so good and it's, it's not over the top where I felt like, you know, I don't even want to read this anymore because he's just trying to be edgy just for the shock value. It's not like that at all. Um. But it is, it's such a captivating book. I recommend basically everybody read it. Obviously, if you're not into like the kind of stuff I just mentioned, then you might not like it. For me, it was just the perfect mix between that, that crazy stuff that happens. Um, and then the rest of the book, it didn't feel like he was being overbearing. But um, anyway, this book, it goes off until the Spanish show up and then Hernan Cortez shows up. And if you're not, if you don't know history, you should know that there is no more Aztec Empire. Obviously, it doesn't go well for them. Um, and you get the detail of that. Another historical figure, Hernan Cortez, is, you know, obviously in this book. Montezuma is in this book. Um, so there's historical figures in it. And as a historian, not a historian, but a historical buff as myself, I look for that in books. Even though I'm reading fiction, historical fiction for me, it has to be historically accurate. Otherwise, I can't get into it. You know what I mean? Um, and this book definitely, it hits that. And you can tell how much research this guy did, not just about the culture, but just the geography of Central America. As you're traveling, like I said, through Central America with Mixley, as you're going on this adventure with him, he describes the setting and he describes everything he sees. And you feel like you're there right next to him, which for me is just like, it's exactly what I, what I wanted. I wanted to go on this adventure with him and just kind of escape from reality. Um, I've been getting into books and reading more often. Some people go to movies to escape from reality. I find books to be even more engrossing and I and I love it. And so this is not a quick read or an easy read. It's hefty. It's so worth it though, guys. And I just bought a bunch of other books by this author, Gary Jennings, because they all seem to have a similar kind of tone. The one book I bought is about Marco Polo. You're going on the adventure with Marco Polo throughout all of his travels. The one book is called Spangle. 
It's about uh, a Civil War vet who joins the circus just to make a living. And it's about him traveling through America and then eventually going overseas to Europe. And it sounds just like, you know, what I'm looking for, that kind of adventuristic novel. Um, he has another book called Raptor that I plan on reading that I also bought. Um, so, yeah, guys, I can't recommend this enough. If you've read this book, please comment and let me know. Um, if you enjoy hearing me talk about these books, I want to do more reviews like this. Please like and comment and let me know. Please follow me so I know that you guys are interested. And that will give me the motivation that I definitely need to keep doing this kind of stuff. So I hope you enjoyed sitting here with me as I got to talk about this book. As you can tell, I'm so excited because this was just such an amazing book. Um, so I plan on doing more reviews in the future. Like I said, please like, comment, uh, follow, subscribe, whatever. Please let me know that you guys are interested so we can do more of these together. Thanks for tuning in, guys.